Hello. I'm sure that was frightening to look at, but anyway, here I am. Um, I'm uh, the last video of the year, so. Uh, and uh, so the award season for films is happening soon. Um, the Golden Globes have been nominated, or have been announced what is nominated, same as Critic Choice Awards and SAG and other award shows. I do want to pray more, well, very specifically to um, the fact Black Panther is nominated for Best Picture and all that good stuff at the Golden Globes and the um, Critics' Choice Awards. Now, as you all know, I enjoy the Dark Knight trilogy quite a bit. And I have at, the, at, at times talked about how... Uh, the last two movies in particular should have been nominated for major awards, particularly in Best uh, Picture and Director and even Acting. Yes, I know Heath Ledger was nominated and won pretty much every single award he got nominated for for The Dark Knight, but I've also talked about you know Christian Bale being considered and possibly even winning a year or two. Probably The Dark Knight, I would say, in terms of the Acting, I think, would have been his best chance of winning. Um, but even The Dark Knight Rises, I think he could have been considered, or even through, for all three films. You know, he gave a fantastic performance in all three. Um, but uh, much has been said about it, and I even found out about something. Uh, you know, there was a you know best action film. Like, or Best Action Movie, the Critics' Choice Award for Best Action Movie. There used to be Best Actor and Best Actress, but apparently only from 2012 to 2016, for those years, that's the only... Um, those were the only years those categories were considered. Uh, best Action Movie is still a thing, but Best Actor and Actress in an Action Movie are gone. Wasn't even considered for last year. I didn't even notice that. Um, I'm sure Gal Gadot would have won for sure for best uh, actress in a you know action movie, um, the Wonder Woman. But you know, I want to talk about uh, Black Panther mostly and how uh, the omission of the Dark Knight and all the other award shows. Um, now I enjoyed Black Panther. I've Rewatched and I think it's a very fine film. I enjoy it. However, uh, in comparison, I do think Avengers: uh, Infinity War is a better film. I enjoy that more. I, I just like how the culmination of all these characters coming together and fighting Thanos, as well as the build-up to Thanos being a major character as opposed to just having a cameo and being talked about here and there he's finally here uh, and he just did a fantastic job in my opinion and and with all that going on uh, I just loved it more I enjoyed it more but I wouldn't say either deserve best picture nominations in my opinion um, I think uh, the Dark Knight definitely should have been the first comic book film nominated at the Golden Globes for Best Picture. Um, and uh, is it also nominated for... How what other award is it nominated for? Mm, not Best Director. Not Actor or Actress. Cinematography, uh, costume design, visual effects, and, you know, and best action movie. Um, and uh, is that it? Best hair and makeup also. Um, black score. Or yeah, be best score. Black score. Yeah, black Panther. But talking about Black Panther because I was really thinking for a bit what I want to talk about, yeah. 
best score and best song for all the stars. Yeah, it's it's nominated for a lot of stuff, but you know, for the Dark Knight in comparison, um, that year. Let me see. No, do 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 do. Best picture. This is the Dark Knight for the Critics' Choice Award. Best Director, Supporting Actor, uh, One Best Action Film, as well as Supporting Actor, is nominated for co Best Score or Composer. Uh, it won another award. Uh, best Cast, like Best Ensemble or so. I believe, um, yeah, uh, but basically, uh, it didn't win, and for the Golden Globes, it was only nominated for Supporting Actor, which it won, which it won, um, Ledger also won Supporting Actor at the SAG Awards, um, I think the cast was nominated for Ensemble for that thing, but, you know, Honestly, The Dark Knight really should have been the first comic book film ever to achieve any of these big monumental award nominations. Whether it would have won them or not is a completely different story, and also up to you, honestly. Um, because the film deserved Academy Award nominations for Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Picture alongside supporting actor and uh, the various technical awards it was nominated for which for comic book films that's the norm it's gonna get nominated for all these but I don't know I, I remember saying like oh it will get nominated Black Panther will be nominated for all these awards it deserves it and I'm like it's a very good film it really is but I just didn't see that best picture nomination or even deserving so of any of these award shows. Um, I just enjoyed Avengers Infinity War better. I love the comp culmination of all these, you know, characters coming together and fighting this big force. It's one of those things I like that the, it's a big culmination of what the MCU in a lot of ways has been building towards ever since the first Avenger film it's been building to this and it finally happened and it was executed incredibly well I'm happy it did um, it's it's the films are the, these MCU films are very entertaining it's very well done well acted but none of them really ever came across as uh, top of the year films like number one uh, perhaps you know maybe the top ten or five depending on how much you enjoyed them I could see that definitely but to put it at the very top of deserving in terms of awards of major awards um, no uh, the thing with the Dark Knight even Dark Knight Rising the whole Dark Knight trilogy overall was, you know, for really the first time in my view of it, the Dark Knight trilogy really had Batman and all those characters, Bruce Wayne, really shown as, in a lot of ways, as real people. Because in many of the comics, they're portrayed in real situations and talk and do things fairly like real people would act. Like in a situation, you have these abilities are able to fight and do this and have money like some psychopath sociopath is causing chaos and wreaking havoc across the city the city needs help got the resources so you're like, uh... and you know in a lot of ways and since it is in a realistic setting it is more, very believable that this could happen I've also time and time again have yes said that the uh, 
Batman is the most realistic superhero comic book character ever, or at least one of the very few, because he has no superpowers. He doesn't have super strength. He's a man who has trained himself to become who he is, travel the world, has money to have all these gadgets and stuff to help him fight crime, have all these cars and stuff. And honestly, uh, in the Dark Knight trilogy, it does truly show just how realistic Batman can be. In the MCU films, you know, they're not very realistic. You know, there's outer space stuff, aliens. Now, I'm not going to say there is no... There are no aliens, or it can't be, and I'm not going to say that, honestly, but in terms of, of, and honestly, this has nothing to even do with realism, but uh, I want to say that basically the MCU and the Dark Knight trilogy are very good representations for the most part of what those characters are. The Dark Knight trilogy just happens to put Batman and company in a realistic setting, in a realistic world, more so than the Tim Burton films, uh, or any of the other films, really, um, that we have seen before. And I'm not counting the animated films, um, because while there are quite a bit of of those that are very well, well done and, well, and very good, which I could talk about, because they're animated, and in a lot of ways they're better to be more faithfully adapted because they're in animated form. They're drawn. They're voiced. It's harder to translate a comic book film in live action, I think, because you have to make it look visually appealing that isn't drawn. You have to have the right actor and actress in the films that you can't just rely on their voice. You know, it has to be a performance. It has to be a you know, it can't just be a vocal performance. You know, somebody could sound good as a certain character, but they might not look good. They might not perform good. The only thing is, like, they, they're vocally. And again, vocalization is not easy to do in acting, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at, is and translating a comic book character into an animated film or television show is easier than live action because when you're doing it in live action you have to do there are certain things you do you have to take liberties with you can't just be faithful because if you're just faithful even those who enjoy a specific comic book line or story could possibly uh, be a you know in many ways be a bit upset with the live action version because Yes, it looks and visually stunning, but it's like, you know, eh, maybe there is something that they was just done not right. Like, they chose the wrong person. Because while they might vocally sound good, their performance of the otherwise might not have been all that good. You know, um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong for a live-action uh, adaptation of a superhero film animation is uh, easier. I'm not saying animation is easy, but in terms of adapting a comic book uh, character into a movie or even TV show, it would be much easier to do so than, you know, casting a whole bunch of people and uh, figuring out what kind of suits and costumes they're going to be wearing and then having them fitted and all of this and that. There's so many things that goes into um, a live action film whereas if you just uh, have drawings and this looks good then you can have, do that and draw it and ensure the performance the vocal performances sync up with the animation and also if you're adapting it you know obviously have to, having to write a good adaptation that's faithful but also perhaps a bit different uh, that you know isn't so faithful that, you know, because when you're making a movie, you can uh, do things, like if you're d basing it off of a book or a comic book, you 
and you want to take a literal adaptation, that sometimes takes away from people. You know, sometimes if they have read the book or comic, there might be something that just didn't, that rubbed them the wrong way. Or even if they haven't read it, maybe there was something that just rubbed people the wrong way. Maybe it was just something executed wrong. Like in many ways, like technically it was right, but when you see it visually, it just didn't turn out right. If that makes sense. Um, but the Dark Knight trilogy did this with Batman. I'm sorry for this long explanation. It's all supposed to be about uh, comic book films and the representation and awards. Is what I'm trying to get at. And the thing is, with all these nominations of Black Panther, and Black Panther, again, is good. It's very good. But it's not deserving of best picture, in my opinion. Uh, especially compared to Infinity War. Like, if we were going to say one comic book film can be considered for best picture, I think many would say Infinity War. Because it was just such a huge eventful film um and you know the dark knight definitely deserved to have been the first to have been nominated for best picture in all these award shows or if it did get snubbed then the dark knight rises i think should have been the first because those two films were very groundbreaking. That whole trilogy was groundbreaking for what it does, or for what it has been doing, or did. But the you know MCU in many ways is groundbreaking for what it has done. You know of creating a world, and all these uh, characters in this universe connecting here and there, and then being brought together in the Avengers and how they interact with everybody else. It is incredible. You know, it's, you know, the MCU does incredible work. Um, I know many people are very mixed on what they think of uh, Captain Marvel, uh, the next MCU film. I just hope it's good. I hope it's entertaining. Uh, I don't have too high of hopes for it. But I hope it doesn't get nominated for Best Picture if it's not that good. At least with Black Panther, it is good, but I don't know. I've seen many people say, oh, it's like the black first black superhero. Well, there was Blade. You forget about Blade. You forget about Shaq's film, uh, Steel. Actually, I think most people did because that was awful. How about uh, Halle Berry and Catwoman? First female black uh, superhero? A comic book character with their own film. Or an anti-hero in that film, if anything. Um, but, yeah, I mean... With how people have lauded Black Panther being, you know... Uh, so innovative in this and that. Like, many movies in the past have done that already. It's just it's part of the MCU, and the MCU is popular. Really. Um... I believe Blade has a big cult following. Um, I think it was very successful when it came out, if I recall correctly. Um, uh, here we go. Blade film. Yes, it was a very yeah, it was a commercial success. Like I thought, forty-five million to make, hundred thirty-one point two million box office. Uh, yeah, it was. It seems to have a uh, cult following. Yeah, um, it's it's you know in many ways that was a more innovative film than Black Panther, but again, Black Panther is part of the MCU, so hence it gets this kind of praise. But The Dark Knight deserved to have been the first. Best Picture nominee of the Golden Globes. It was nominated for Best Picture at the Critics' Choice Award, but it, all of those like seemed to go to Slumdog Millionaire. Why? I don't know. Uh, I saw Slumdog Millionaire. That was a good film, but not Best Picture. 
uh, worthy, you know, in terms of winning awards. What didn't deserve the major awards it got, in my opinion. But yeah, I I just wanted to address this because it was really interesting. You know, comic book films are now being essentially shoved into being pushed to the forefront of being, you know, oh, give it, give comic book films their due, give them nominations, give them awards, perhaps, and, um, they should have been doing so before now, Dark Knight deserved to have been the first comic book film to be nominated and even win, you know, it deserved to have won Best Picture and Director. And actor, but um, you know, the actor who played Black Panther doesn't have a chance of being nominated at the Critics' Choice Awards for Best Actor in an Action Movie because they canceled that category as well as actress in an action movie for some reason. But uh, I know I kind of rambled on, but I hope it was very, cons you know, it, it, you understand what I'm saying. The Dark of Night was really groundbreaking. And the things people are saying that are groundbreaking about Black Panther, you can apply that 20 years before with Blade. Particularly with it being a black lead in a comic book film, honestly. Um, if we're going to go that way. Um, but yeah, um, that's... Really, what I have to say about that, um, it's, um, yeah, that's really it. Um, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. All right. Uh, Till next time. Hope you all have a good day and a good week. Bye.